oh, the calving now. It's not melting anymore. It's calving. Look how they switched from the words there. The lexicon switched from melting to calving. The mainstream media is in control of all the lexicon and all the stories going out. So notice the new build out of calving glaciers off of Greenland. Adapt 2030 Mini Ice Age Conversations covers changes in our climate due to a new and intensifying grand solar minimum. In the media, overlooking, downplaying, or burying cold weather changes occurring on our planet. This is in order to keep the global warming agenda steaming full speed ahead. I do this podcast and radio program because we need to begin conversations on how to adapt our food growing strategies long before 2030 as agricultural zones shift, affecting global crop output, but very few mainstream media outlets are talking about the most important issue of our time, cold weather crop losses. Our sun is going through a 400 year cycle, which has effects on our weather patterns as our magnetosphere weakens and the jet streams go out of flow. It's not CO2, it's not you, it's the sun. Are you ready to thrive in the grand solar minimum? Then join me for many Ice Age Conversations. I'm your host, David Dubine. The deeper down the cooling platform we go, the deeper down the curve we go, the mainstream media is going to want to control every single lockstep explanation as to why these changes are happening. This fits right into exactly what I'm talking about. They are now trying to have to explain why the sea level rises have not occurred because there's an enormous amount of people asking, saying, yo, 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 wait, 35, 40 years later, sea levels, we have not left the coasts. You're still building. You're putting up new condos on the coast. Wealthy are buying along the coasts. Everybody's back to the coast. New development, new roads, new everything on the coasts. Hey, wait, I thought you said all the water was going to rise. How are we able to give loans to these developers if all the water is going to rise? And there's a lot of questions being asked, literally a tidal wave, no pun intended, of people asking, wait a second, you told us ocean level is going to rise. You spooked everybody. I sold my house and now developers are in tearing my house down, putting up like a, a 30 floor apartment building inside there along the beach. How'd you even give financing to them if the waters are going to rise? And a convenient seismic study reveals a huge amount of water is now dragged into the Earth's interior, three times more than they thought. Now they're trying to equate that the reason the ocean levels aren't rising as much is because now more water is being dragged down through the subduction zones three times more than they thought. And this is now offsetting. But we saw last year they were saying that, well, the weight of all the melting water has actually depressed the seabed. So we're actually getting ocean level rises, but the weight of the water is pushing the seabed down so we don't see the sea level rise. This is a second convenient excuse of why the sea levels aren't rising. So you'll see this, and it was pushed everywhere. You saw this one flying around left, right, and center. But when you come up and you talk about increasing ice on Greenland, that is a no-go. They don't want you talking about that. These areas that were supposed to be melting, causing all this sea level rise, have suddenly ceased melting at the rates they were. And now there's new ice and snow cover on there to the tune of billions and billions of new tons. So I don't know if you take a look at Greenland. Go over the Danish Meteorological Institute, the DMI. This is run by the Danish government. There are research stations across Greenland. And they're measuring the amount of new ice and snow on Greenland. 382 billion tons extra this last year. The CO2 proponents will come out and say, well, they didn't count the calving off of that. They didn't count the calving glaciers off of it. They didn't count the calving ice. It only counted the gain on there. They didn't you know, subtract all the calving because it's melting so fast. And you start to get into this whole, whoa, 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 wait a second. The whole argument was it was melting. Now, the melting is stopped and is scientifically proven. You notice you haven't heard about Greenland in quite a long time because scientifically you can just do like a one-second search engine search and find that it's, it's basically back to the 1970s in terms of loss on the ice. So something did an instant flip on the switch there. In two years, it went from, you know, rapid melting into, whoa, it's gaining again. 
And it happened two years in a row, 2015 to 16, 16, 17, and now 17 to 18. Uh, the melt season just uh, ended because it's getting cooler. So the discussion has switched from now melting into, oh, the calving is now. The, there's so much. I, the calving is causing, oh, the calving now. It's not melting anymore. It's calving. Look how they switched from the words there. The lexicon switched from melting to calving. The mainstream media is in control of all the lexicon and all the stories going out. So notice the new build out of calving glaciers off of Greenland. You notice they, they've really pulled back from using the word melting, and they just substitute the word and now they're still pushing with the Greenland narrative. But take a look at that seismic study reveals huge amounts of waters dragged into the Earth's interior. Now, the one thing that, for me, it was an interesting article anyway, because it's you know based in some science, the collision of the tectonic plates and the ocean drag. Now, what they're saying is three times more water is going down there, but it's not coming out in the volcanoes. So they're wondering, where is all this water disappearing to? Because they were thinking that it would, would be some sort of equilibrium. You know, the water gets sucked down 60 miles. It gets boiling again. It turns to steam. It mixes with, the, with some of the magma. It creates new materials. There's, new, there's a lot of interaction with the H2O combining with other substances in the magma that's in a liquid form as well. They thought there'd be some sort of equilibrium where... X amount, X trillions of tons of water going down would equal X amount coming out in terms of volcanic activity. But they just can't find the equilibrium anywhere. This was the main point of the article as well. The uppermost mantle is making the water disappear. Where is it going? Which lies credence to there's three times more water under our Earth's crust than there is in all the oceans combined. So think about that. If there's still some reservoir down there that's kind of empty, you could empty out literally a quarter of our oceans and it would still just be down under the earth refilling what's under the earth. And we wouldn't even have a, a dent into it. So that's the statistics that are so far known. And, you know, science is always changing. So as we get better tech, we could probably get a better gauge on how much water is truly under the crust of our earth. But just as a base there's three times more water under our Earth's crust than in all the oceans of our world. So when you hear these ancient legends of, you know, waters, floods, etc., perhaps maybe those floods that we read about in some of the more ancient texts uh, from the Indian Vedas and, and the Christian religions of the Bible and Zoroastrianism and a few others in between talk about these floods. And everywhere on the planet has a flood myth. So it doesn't matter where you go, every planet or every society and every culture has a flood myth. It's renowned, it's universal. Which makes me wonder, did the water, some of it seep out from under the earth and fill up and this is what caused part of the flood? Because how much cloud cover could there have really been in the atmosphere to run for months on end? And even at that point, there would have been some equilibrium where, you know, that water would have come off the hillsides. And it would have flowed into the oceans. But even if you take every single today and wring it out and like make no clouds on our planet is add all that water in there. It's only looking at, a, at just several feet of increasing ocean levels across the entire planet. Let's even say it was 100 feet. Great. That's that's way more than the actual measurements came out to be of how much cloud cover. If you compressed every cloud and took all the vapor out of it and left no water vapor in the atmosphere and pushed it all back in the oceans, it's still not even at 100 feet, but I'll put 100 feet to be generous. You're not going to get massive flooding across the entire planet at 100 feet of increase. There's going to be so many places that wouldn't even notice that. And to have a continuous amount of rain off the entire planet, it had to have been something else injecting that much water. Maybe it was part of these three amounts of ocean of water under our crust somewhere cracked and it was shooting up, you know, 40 miles into the sky and got carried over through vaporization, something, who knows. But one of the, you know, the flood myths are very possible if something happened in the crust and there were splits, like we're seeing a lot of sinkholes, et cetera, today. What if there was a gargantuan movement in the crust and then all these fracture zones open up and that water from beneath our planet, the crust just started to ooze out through the crust for a little while? That would make an, in, that would make sense more than continuous rains for months on end because that rain would run off. But this was a global event that took you know 
hundreds and hundreds, thousands of feet of water came out from somewhere and raised to literally cover lands. And then it went away. So what happened? Did, did, was there some kind of event where everything opened up for a short period of time for a couple months and the water oozed out of the crust? You know, nothing's out of the realm of possibility, especially when you're looking at Velikovsky and worlds in collision. And you start to see a lot of these, what about electromagnetic activity changes? What about the electric universe, electric geology? Could that also not have an impetus into letting some of this water beneath our crust out onto our surface and then somehow pushing it back again after the event's finished? Charge changes, magnetic shifts, who knows? There's a lot that we don't know, but the universal flood myth is, is there for you. So these mainstream media stories that are coming out, they're going to be continuously explained and controlled as we move forward. Absolutely going to need to be. Because put yourself in uh, the, the shoes of um, let's say any government of the planet. Now your people are going to be asking you a lot about what's happening. Why is our food price rising? Why is it more expensive last year? And it's continuously upward. And another interesting thing, I, I, went to, I did a couple search engine searches. So I went to Google first because the headline from Zero Hedge and from the Weather Network was coldest in 150 years, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving coldest in 150 years. So I went over there and uh, what I found was other conservative, shall we say, I should say mainstream, very mainstream news outlets cut down the year number on it. So like the Boston Globe, they cut it down and said coldest in 100 years. But that's strange because they're in the epicenter of the coldest of the cold there, which broke all their records going back to the 1870s, yet they're even in their news articles are saying coldest in 100 years. And then we start to see it, you know, coldest in 80 years and others. So just go ahead and do a search engine, any one you want, and put coldest Thanksgiving in 150 years, and then you'll find Newsweek, coldest in 100 years. But wait a second, you already have the temperature measurements. They know they smashed all these records going back at least to the 1880s, 1887, 1888, something around there, 1889. So you can see how the mainstream is trying to do the damage control right now on just the cold records that are occurring. And what I want to direct you to also is talking about the control of the narrative. Over this last election cycle, you saw how many conservative voices being banned off of Twitter, Facebook, etc., because they were trying to control the narrative moving into the election. Well, that worked to some degree, but not really as well as they had planned. They planned to cut down all chatter and, well, it didn't work as well as they thought with the full-on censorship to stop the discussion. But politics are one thing. Okay, economy is another. Now, when the economy guys and girls start to equate these food prices with the grand solar minimum, with the economic contractions... At what point might they be also censored for putting the causation two and two together that is not fitting the narrative of the mainstream media that wants you to think this has never happened before? And what about the climate channels like we've already seen WordPress censoring? Everybody I talk to that does YouTube videos about it continually talks about censoring, including myself. I get so many weird anomalies on my channel. Adapt 2030. Go check that one out. I'll have view counts up to 15,000 views on a video, and then it'll drop back to 12,000 as I sleep overnight. And, it'll, and by the time I wake up, it'll be 12,100. Like, wait a second, how did 3,000 views disappear off? And then I'll have some videos that the view count will get stuck for like two days, where it'll go to 12,123, and it won't move for three days. So subscribers, they're continually bounced. Even if they click the bell to get subscribed, they're bounced off. They keep writing it. I get probably... Five to seven messages a day saying, hey, I got kicked off your subscription. I had to resubscribe. I've seen my subscription count one day go from 30,000 to 39,000. Oh, my gosh, I got picked up somewhere, somewhere zero hedge or some huge other out news outlet put my featured my channel. And then I got this huge boost in subscriber count. And then later on, you know, six hours later, I go back and it's back down to 30. This is in my early days. Christian over at Ice Age Farmer talks about the same thing. Ice Age 2050 talks about the same thing. He was shadow banned off of Twitter for talking about the climate. Diamond at Oppenheimer Ranch, he talks politics in his weather, so he's being censored as well. It doesn't matter where you go, who you look at, 
If they're talking about the climate and grand solar minimum, there's some pullback and pushback on their viewer count for now. But I'm curious in the future how this is going to play out. Because the, the changes we're talking about are real. It's a reset button for society. It truly is. And they're going to want to control the fear. And if they can continue to say that CO2 is somehow involved in the changes of making things colder, they're going to run with that for a while. Although all the space agencies can said, no, it's from the sunspots. So how long can you have two opposite sets of information flowing? And how are you going to mitigate the panic on the planet? Now, case in point, I want to go to a couple temperature charts here. If you're at the internet and you're at your keyboard there, tropicaltidbits.com, T-R-O-P-I-C-A-L, like tropical drinks, tropical, and then a tidbit, tidbits with an S, tidbits.com. They have these temperature charts up there. If you go up into the forecast models, you can get right into what I'm looking at. Up to the U.S. for just a moment. If you notice the record cold that's been talked about and they're like, I can't believe how cold it is and this is a one-off thing happening here. You're going to be shocked at what's coming next week. The temperatures that you're experiencing or have been experienced or reading about is going to sweep all the way from Canada through the central U.S., down through Florida and into Cuba and in Mexico next week. I mean, places that you wouldn't expect like southern Georgia and southern Mississippi and Louisiana and Texas are going to be 25 degrees Fahrenheit below their normal temperatures. And then behind that, there's another front coming. So everybody talking about grand solar minimum, now these effects are starting to be seen around the planet. And I mean, literally around the planet. 